Building Better Businesses with Catalyst Consulting is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios and Speak Spokane, presented by Delicious Hamburgers. Welcome to Building Better Businesses. I'm Kristen Dees, founder of Catalyst Consulting, an agency that helps small businesses and entrepreneurs start, grow, and level up their businesses. This podcast will bring you interviews with experts in all things business related. Have questions for a business attorney? We've got answers. How about your health insurance? Got you covered there too. New episodes coming your way every week. Find us on the podcasting platform of your choice. Welcome to this episode of Building Better Businesses with Catalyst Consulting. My guest today is Tanya Smith of WorkStory Brand Photography. Yeah, I'm actually rebranding and going to be WorkStory Creative from now on. I haven't formally announced it, so I guess this is it. (laughs) Well, you have a few weeks before this comes out, so it's okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, Yeah, somebody else that was on, they were like, I'm still fixing my website. So I was like, no, you got like three or four weeks. It's okay. (laughs) So um, awesome. That'll be exciting. So um, yeah, we sort of are connected. Like we definitely have a lot of mutual friends. Um, we mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever actually sat down and had a conversation. So it was really fun for you to reach out and be like, hey, I want to be on your podcast. And I was like, perfect. I'd love you to be on my podcast. So <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a small community, but sometimes it, it amazes me like how I haven't actually met somebody yet. Because I'm like, we know like 400 of the same people. <laughs> like we just never actually talked. So um, thanks for doing this with me. And um, yeah, so we'll just jump right in. So tell us a little bit about you as a human being. Yeah, so I live in Liberty Lake. So, you know, the outskirts of Spokane. I love it because it's halfway between Coeur d'Alene and Spokane. So I'm able to like integrate into both communities, I guess. Uh, I married and have three kids and they're all finally back in school as of yesterday. Uh, So I'm like jumping for joy. (laughs) <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm, I'm a creative professional. I've been self-employed since 2006 and I just love talking about business and doing business. Yay. That's exciting. What's a fun fact about you? Uh, let's see. Well, I went to school in Los Angeles at the fashion design fashion Institute of design and merchandising. And that was so fun just to be in that environment so much creativity and I studied graphic design there and I didn't love LA. I was kind of glad to get out of there, but it was fun to have some time there uh, to go to school and work a little bit. Yeah. I feel like sometimes it's a good, it's a cool adventure. Like I lived in LA for like, that's almost like a, Ooh, okay. Right. Right. That's a real deal. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But I prefer Spokane much, much more for living and (laughs) raising a family. Mm -hmm. So yeah, makes sense. Very cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you do, the work side of things, and how you provide support for business owners and entrepreneurs. Yeah, so WorkStory helps experts easily attract high-end clients through authentic and beautiful brand storytelling. So I started out as a graphic designer. Um, I eventually um, saw that the smaller businesses I was working with compared to the bigger brands uh, didn't have great photography. And so I eventually moved into more of a photographer, videographer role for brands and businesses. Um, But then I noticed, you know, I was giving these small businesses these amazing images and some of them didn't know what to do with them or they'd put them on a DIY website and it looked horrible. (laughs) So I'm kind of going full circle back to providing everything, branding. So, you know, logos, brand identity, simple websites. I don't do anything too complicated. Refer those to somebody else. (laughs) Uh, You know, and then, you know, if you need templates for your social media or whatever, uh, to have that consistency and cohesiveness within a brand that tells your story. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Um, And I I think you're right, too. It's it's nice to have like kind of a one stop shop for for stuff Mm -hmm. like that. You know, a couple people that are in the same area, like marketing, branding, and they tend to do of all of it or even like website design like um i don't know if you know kara hooper but she does a little bit of everything she's primarily like website design right rising but also supports with general brand identity marketing strategy digital marketing right yeah 
Yeah, so she's probably that. someone I would refer people out to for a more complicated website or an yeah. SEO strategy or something like that, because that's yep. her specialty. So yeah. yeah, like a whole different. Yeah, it's it, right. exactly <laughs> no to be dangerous in a lot of areas. Uh, uh -huh. It's like, <laughs> that's about I'm like, okay, now I need an expert. Like, I know that we need somebody and I know right. what it's for. And I yes. can come up with some basics. But yeah, no, I agree. Um, so you talked a little bit about it. So how did you end up where you are now? Like, what was your journey from the beginning of working life to now what you do? Yeah. So when I was at school in LA, I worked at an advertising agency that produced like trailers and posters for movies. Uh, so I, I kind of got my toe dipped into that, like the entertainment industry. And then I worked for, uh, I moved to Northern California and worked for an agency that primarily did dental practice marketing. So it was like totally different <laughs> um, working with these small businesses. And that's where I first got this thought of like, man, these guys need better pictures. They need to show their faces and tell their individual story. Um, and then from there, I started my own freelance graphic design business and worked with um, big brands, actually, like HP and Guess and Kodak, which no longer exists. But <laughs> uh, I did some work for Microsoft, that kind of thing, and got to see that totally other end of like an international brand and everything that goes into that. Like the HP style guide was like this 500 page website um, with super complicated <laughs> brand guidelines and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, again, that total 360 of working with a small business and their needs are different. Uh, but I really loved working the, with that one-on-one -on -one with an owner, a business owner, instead of, you know, 20 different people in charge giving yep. me input, all having opinions <laughs> and having to, yeah, having to like, follow all these guidelines and stick within the parameters of the, the big brand. I really prefer to work with the smaller businesses. And so that's when I started work story about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really loving working with the smaller businesses. Yeah. I think it's fun. Um, that's something that I'm on the same page too, is like, I don't, I wouldn't want to be a consultant for a business that has more than like a couple owners probably. Mm -hmm. But uh, another thing that I've started to branch into is a uh, fractional COO. Oh, yeah. Where I'm like at the C-suite level, if there is more people or mm -hmm. are more. People. Um, but yeah, that kind of like fills the gap a little bit for for some of those things where it's like, right. oh, okay. Then you're, st you actually have a, you're, you have a voice, like you're mm -hmm. contracted <laughs> and yeah. have a voice in what's happening. Um, but yeah, no, I, I get that too. Like it's easier to talk to the decision maker or mm -hmm. maker. There's a couple, but. Um, so how would you describe the differences between branding, marketing, and advertising? Oh, I love this question. So branding is like the identity of the business, right? It's who they are, um, their character, uh, and it's primarily used to, you know, create brand loyalty and attract the right clients and, um, and that kind of thing. So, and then the marketing is how you spread the word about who you are and your product and service. And then advertising, I don't know, I feel like there's a fine line between marketing and advertising, like it just kind of goes together, you know? I, I guess I would, I would put advertising in the category of like paid ads, Facebook mm -hmm. ads, print ads, billboards, you know, that kind of thing, versus marketing as being kind of a whole strategy, how everything works together or um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That's kind of, that's my understanding of it for the most part too, is like the branding and, and, and then the difference between marketing and advertising is the paid piece of it. That's how yeah, I classify yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Like right. It. Well, and I yeah. think branding is a marketing activity, right? Like mm -hmm. the better your brand is, the more effective your marketing is going to be. I would say, you know, put your branding as part of your marketing budget because it's something you need to do. You need to constantly be working on it and improving it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, because they all go together. Like you can't yeah. just have without the others, right? Um, or they, it won't be effective. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to branding, either specifically it's photog or photography related or otherwise, um, what common misconceptions do you hear from people when you're working with them? Well, I think a lot of small businesses, especially, don't see the value in branding. Like, why should I spend money on this? I'm not going to get 
an immediate return on my investment, which might be true. You know, you're not going to launch a new brand identity and immediately have people flocking to you maybe. (laughs) Uh, But I definitely, you know, my clients who are working on stepping up their brand image definitely see a return on their investment um, over time. Mm -hmm. You know, they're attracting higher paying clients or more clients, um, definitely being perceived as being professional and high value, that kind of thing. So Mm. yeah, I would definitely say that's a misconception. Like you're not going to get a return on investment on branding. That's absolutely not true. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like sometimes too, when you get to the point where you're starting to invest in stuff like that, because I think this happens for my clients and probably happens for you too, where when someone spends the money on something like a service that we provide, then they feel more professional. They feel yes. like they're looking up because they're like, okay, this is like the real deal. Like a, someone believes in me and thinks I know what I'm doing. Right. But sometimes it's me when I'm like, I tell someone what I do. They're like, that's amazing. I'm like, Oh, thank you. Good. Woo. Okay. <laughs> All right. I still know. Well, um, but then, you know what I'm saying? Like you've invested the, the time, the effort, the money into branding or a consultant or whatever mm-hmm. it is, marketing. Uh, website designer, you feel like you're playing at a different level. So right. I think it's kind of a cool side effect too, where it's like you, you're investing it, um, investing money in yourself. And like you said, it's not a necessarily a direct return, um, but it does, it helps you grow your business in the long run. Right. So um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the importance of branding on social media for small businesses. <laughs> mm. we keep touch on that a little bit. And that's something that I feel like we um, both probably overlap in a bit. So yeah, totally. How do you kind of phrase that or like, how do you kind of put that together for people or what advice would you give when it comes to branding on social media? Yeah. So from like a visual visual communication standpoint, having consistency in your look is something I notice small businesses struggle with, especially if they haven't gotten help with their branding or haven't defined a style. Uh, And it's, it's easy to do, especially if you hire someone like me to, to help you define, you know, here's the colors we should use, choose a couple fonts. Um, If you're going to use photos, they should fall within these style guidelines, you know, and like, what kind of voice do you want to have? And what kinds of posts should you have? You know, like, if you can define all of that, it's actually easy to deploy your social media, right? Because it's a form, it's a formula, and you have templates, and um, it just follows the rules. Just like I said, with that HP style guide, someone in the organization made these rules, right? And any designer that has to follow them or that's working on the brand has to follow those rules. So it also makes it easier for you to hand off your social media to someone else within your organization if you have those style guidelines established. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I offer actually is just helping you come up with um, those rules and setting them up like in Canva or something so you or someone else can easily take it over mm-hmm. and create your content. And so that's consistent and looks like a brand, you know, people can look at it and say, Oh, that's this business. And I, I know them because they've consistently put out this style of, of communications. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a, that's definitely a piece that people kind of miss on too, is just like, what's the message that you're trying to share or who you're mm-hmm. trying to get to and like, right. hope- People let go of the obsession of trying to reach everyone, you know, because that's mm-hmm. always yeah, totally. You're kind of new still, you're like, ah, but I want money from every wherever I can get it right now. Like it doesn't even matter, and you're like, but it does. I promise. Like right, we'll go further to the right people if you um, have a super clear message. So yeah, very very true. Well, it's um, easier to to decide. It's easier to find those people if you have them have it super defined, right? Your target market, yeah. and it's easier to decide that style too, like if you're targeting moms versus like football players or something, like it's going to look and sound super different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're in like the more of an influencer type of space too, like that's a whole different aesthetic. There's a whole different, Mm -hmm. like almost etiquette or process strategy, I guess, to your posting and how you're phrasing things and, you know, tagging people and tagging locations. Like there's all this other stuff that comes into it. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, it makes it a lot easier to, to narrow it down. Um, where do you kind of start with people? So if you're, if you're talking somebody through that process, like what's kind of, or where do you start like on the checklist of what do you need to figure out first? (laughs) Yeah. So I actually have this thing called a brand storm and it's a two hour interview. I have all these questions. We go through, you know, where has your brand been? Where is it now? 
Where do you want to go with it? Um, and I do this for anyone. Like if you just need photography or videos, or if you need a full branding thing, or if you just want help with a certain piece and just, you know, it's a ton of questions. <laughs> and then from there, I kind of make a diagnosis and some recommendations. And like I said, those might include things I could help you with, or maybe some things you could help them with, or uh, some other person that's without, mm -hmm. you know, outside of my wheelhouse. But that's why I love having connections like mm -hmm. we do, because I can make recommendations for them. Um, and then from there, they can decide to hire me or do it themselves or whatever. But we just, it's kind of a diagnostic <laughs> tool, I guess, to help them decide what to do next. And then from there, yeah. it's just like a plan, I guess, that I'm making for you. And then from there we go to the next steps. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Cause that's kind of, I mean, that's a similar process for me and probably most of us that are in some sort mm -hmm. of like service-based type of arena um, is we're all, at least the ones that are good at it, I think. Um, right. <laughs> try not to sound super arrogant, but, um, you know, <laughs> there's this common theme of being able to problem solve for other people. And like you said, like diagnose something by just sitting and listening to them and asking questions. And like, these are the questions that are important. And mm -hmm. then from that you can take the information and create something for them or be like, Oh, what you actually need is a website designer, like somebody that yeah. can do a legit, like disgusting WordPress website. Yeah. <laughs> like, or e-commerce or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or <laughs> start there and then come talk to me about your branding shoot. Um, once you yeah. have that stuff sorted out or you have a timeline for it. Um, yeah. So no, I totally, there's, there's definitely that, like you have, it's like sort of an innate thing. Like you either developed it over time or you were born with it. Um, right. yeah. But yeah. Just like diagnose something. Yeah. Well, and I, I developed the brandstorm because people would come to me like, how much will it cost for branding or whatever? And I'm like, well, that's mm -hmm. super <laughs> vague term. I don't really know what you yeah. need. So um, that's why I developed it. Like it's a super affordable, like first step. We would need to do it anyway, no matter what we're going to do. So just pay for that step first. And then we can decide how much it's all going to cost and what you need and everything. And it's been going really well. My clients have really been loving it and I'm loving it too. You know, even if people don't end up hiring me on the other end, like they got this super valuable plan and clarity on next steps of what to do mm -hmm. and what to budget for and that kind of stuff. So it's been really cool. Yep. Yeah. I have a similar one. It's a business audit basically, but it's yeah. the same type of, of concept of like, here's, I'm going to ask you a million questions about your business. Um, and at the end of it, you'll have some like action items and things that you can do, right. and, or like you said, things I can help you with. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's helpful to have, have it framed up. I think it aligns with the pillars that I've created for myself. Mm -hmm. Like what are, you know, the, the five pillars of business and that kind of stuff. So I like it. Um, cool. I like lists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, so when and or why does someone need a branding shoot or headshots or both? Yeah, such a good question. So most people come to me for branding photos if they are redoing their website or they remodeled their office or they're t just taking their brand to that next level, right? Like they started out, their nephew did their website <laughs> or, you know, yeah. they got a logo off of Fiverr or something. <laughs> um, they're yeah. just going to that next level. Um, oftentimes they've been in business for, you know, five years, 20 years or whatever. And they just, they just want to make things look better. They want to tell their story. They want to showcase their people, not use stock photos. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as headshots go, I'd say like anytime you changed your look, like you got older, you changed your hair, you lost weight, you gained weight, you know, any, yeah. so you're not, not recognizable anymore in your headshot, you should go get a new one. So that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I, like <laughs> I, I normally tell people like six months to a year or like give or take, because that's usually something has changed in, in that mm -hmm. aspect. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see somebody's picture like on their business card or something. I'm like, you do not look the same at all. Yeah. Like, yeah. Purple. And now it's right. blonde. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Glasses and not glasses. Um, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I've seen some where like, it's clear their headshots 20 years old because they've got poofy hair and like, yeah, a, you know, a nineties dress on or something. And I'm like, yeah. okay, obviously you don't look like this anymore. <laughs> it's time to get a new headshot. <laughs> it was like when we did like, glamour shots in the nineties. Yeah. And yeah. You your headshot. Right. It's like, Oh, no, no. It's yeah. Tight. And a lot of people will say like, well, I looked 
young and beautiful then. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like you look how you look now, you have all this valuable experience. Like, you know, people don't, I don't know. It makes you look more outdated and not as an expert if you look like you're from the 90s or 80s, I think, you know, like get an updated headshot. Nobody cares that you aged 20 years because it's a fact of life. Um, yeah. It's you know. weirder when they show up at your office and it's a literally a completely different person. Yeah, it's like, who are you? So, yeah. right. So, and especially with all the online networking we do nowadays, I think it's so important to look like you look in real life when you're headshot. So when they meet you in real life, they'll know who you are. It's like dating. It's like, yeah. you don't want to Seriously. kiss your client. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like just, well, and something that uh, occurred to me at some point in time, because this whole like having my own business and being a lot more present on social media and having to be comfortable with video and live video, et cetera, has been um, an interesting thing. But one of the things that popped in my head at some point was, um, particularly when it comes to pictures, is everyone else already knows that you look like that. Yeah. Uh, like you don't know because you don't see yourself all the time. And most of us have a different image in our heads of what we look like mm -hmm. externally. So we don't see our expressions. We don't see how we are um, when we're talking or, you know, gesturing and all that kind of stuff. Or like how much, how, how many chins you have. Like <laughs> everyone else already knows if you have more than one. Like you can't, <laughs> by not posting a picture of yourself because you're self-conscious. It's like, it still exists. Like, and right. so that really helped me just be like, oh, okay. So the journey to self-love yes. um, has actually been an accidental, like just from the social media stuff. Cause it can also be mm -hmm. really bad for people, right? Yeah. But, for me, I kind of like fell in love with myself a little bit because I did a ton of video. I've done some courses, so I have a lot of video content on my courses mm -hmm. as well. And so just having to watch myself, I was like, oh, this is how other people see me. You know, I make all these little faces or do things with my hands. Like I do, this is a very <laughs> famous. <laughs> hmm. um, but yeah, so it's, I don't know, it, it helps you with just accepting that that you look the way you look and it's fine and like people still love you and accept you. Like it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay if you have extra chins or maybe you have no chins. Like that's fine too. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Right. No, I told you that. It's like yeah. just, but it's a big part of that. I think that. Yeah. Well, and having the right photographer helps too. I mean, cause it, yeah. we do look different frozen in time than we do yeah. when we're in motion. Right. Yeah. Uh, so having someone who knows how to pose you well and light you to be flattering and, that kind of stuff can help, especially if you're self-conscious. Um, but that's a benefit I've heard from a lot of my clients from getting a photo shoot is um, just coming out of it on the other side, feeling good about themselves and yeah. loving their pictures. Cause oftentimes they had a bad experience where they hated all the pictures, Yeah, uh, you know, and I don't do a lot of retouching, but you know, Photoshop is an option <laughs> for uh, any glaring thing that, is distracting from your message. That's kind of my philosophy on retouching is we want people to see you. We want them to hear your message. So if there's anything weird in the photo or anything you absolutely hate, we'll just take it out. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, perfect. Yep. Cause yeah. that's, I mean, that's how I did. I got headshots done not that not too long ago. And I was like, cause I am self-conscious about having extra chance. I'm a little chubby, you know, it's mm -hmm. fine. But I was like, I don't want to show them all. Cause like the last ones that I had, <laughs> It was like upward angle, like sunset lighting. So it was like all the shadows. I had yeah. like eight chins. I was like, this is not what I want to have. So, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm like, that does that's just not fair. But yeah, so I was like, hey, you know, like she's like, oh yeah, that's a piece of cake. Like this is how you do your chin and like how you make it. And I was like, oh, okay. So I mean, it's like still there, but it's not like right. yeah, all of it. It wasn't like accentuating. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, oh my God, I can talk about like double chins forever. Um. <laughs> So if someone is still in the DIY budget range, um, cause I know it can be an investment for mm -hmm. sort of yeah. really, really good brand photography. Right. Um, what tips or tricks could they use to kind of create their own little mini branding shoot? Like, or even if it's just like how to take selfies of themselves, yeah. um, what suggestions do you have? Yeah. So that's a super great point. Cause even if you do invest in a branding photographer for like your hero images on your website and your social media, we still need to take, candid photos i mean it's just part yeah. of our life like I, the people who are doing social media well especially are creating their own content right mm -hmm. so definitely uh finding or creating light uh photography means painting with light so 
if it's dark, it's going to be grainy photos. <laughs> so getting close to a window, going outside in shade, um, getting a simple lighting kit from Amazon, you know, they're pretty affordable. Um, and you just, if you're going to buy some light, you want to get light that is 5,500 Kelvin. That's white light. That's typically the more flattering light. That's not going to be super yellow or super green. Um, so that's something to look for. Uh, and then if you're just playing around with angles, you know, posing, you can kind of look in the mirror or just take pictures of yourself, see what's going to be flattering. You can ask a friend to take your picture. So you're not, you know, having your arm out <laughs> in all the pictures <laughs> to take a selfie or get a tripod with a little trigger. Those are super affordable on Amazon too. Um, I mean, my behind the scenes pictures for my photo shoots are taken with my cell phone. So there's nothing wrong with getting candid shots, you know, just asking someone, hey, can you take a couple of pictures of me doing this thing or whatever? Mm -hmm. It's totally fine for social media. So yeah. yeah. Sense. Um, so what about like if you're staging products or even kind of like, I mean, I guess it's not really the same for selfies and stuff because you're sort of like the central focus anyway. Right. But like, like projects, product staging or people who take pictures of like food and stuff like that. Like what, is there a place it should be in the picture, et cetera? So, um, I mean, for like styling, that's actually kind of hard. <laughs> uh, having a design background, you know, knowing some design principles can help with that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to give tips for that to like, a layman, I guess, I don't know. Um, I use foam core board, you can get it at the craft store for like, as something to lay it on, or you can use as a reflector. Like if you, you know, place your products by a window, have a white board on the other side, the opposite mm -hmm. side of the window, that's going to reflect light back in to your product. Um, okay. I guess if, it, if it's anything like shiny, you want to watch for reflections or hot spots on your products and you can kind of use the opposite like blackboards to uh block out some of the light that's shining oh, okay. in those hot spots um let's see i i typically use a flash for product photography it just gives it that really crisp look but you can definitely start out taking product photos with your phone you know the cameras on phones these days are so great um just experiment. Like I said, make sure you're paying attention to that lighting. Um, make sure you're not getting blurry photos, uh, you know, with camera shake. Um, generally having enough light is going to help with that. If you're using your phone, just make sure you have enough light and then they won't be blurry. Uh, and then, I mean, some basic design rules are, you know, having groupings of three or five, you know, uh, odd numbers is more flattering or more aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, you can crop really tight in that can make it interesting and then show up, you know, zoom out to show the full product. Those are some tips for, you know, making your product photography interesting for your website or your social media. So yeah, that's a few easy tips, I guess, <laughs> for product photography. Yeah. No Cause I think people get intimidated by it and I've, I've heard as well and just from dabbling in it that like the lighting stuff is super important. Like I have a ring light that sits mm -hmm. on my desk. And so if I'm recording video or something like that, I put my phone on it. Um, or even if I record on my laptop, but yeah, it, I think it was super cheap. It was like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'll say that I wish I had one that my phone fit in the center of, cause it's kind of a oh, small yeah. and so it's in the middle and it also, my phone's too heavy for it. So, like, oh, so it falls over. <laughs> I have to like do <laughs> stuff with like the, the legs to like get my phone to be at the right <laughs> angle sometimes, but I just need to get a new one at some point. So, um, yeah, I think that's been super helpful for me, even just from doing so many zooms and all of that mm -hmm. too, having better lighting. Cause I don't look like I have like all the dark circles. Cause I'm like, in right. this, like cave that's my office space, you know? So, um, yeah. yeah, lighting is super good. Or even just going outside. Like if you have, yep. if you have just like take pictures outside, um, I feel like that's helpful too. If you don't yeah. have, access to like a ring light or something like that. Right. But yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. harder to do in Spokane because of the weather. Not <laughs> always favorable. <laughs> yeah. so don't uh, make for six months of the year. And then yeah. <laughs> yeah. so from like April to September, you're good. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Um, but I would say like, if you can invest in a photographer for your products, like do it. I do some for um, Simply Northwest. 
like we photograph all the products for her uh, Christmas catalog in two hours. We get like oh, all of nice. them done. It's super fat. Like we have a setup at right at their location. They don't even have to bring the products anywhere. I just come there, set up my lighting. We just bang it out really quick. Like it, mm-hmm. it can be more affordable than you might think for that kind of photography, like white background, you know, e-commerce stuff. Um, so definitely yeah. look into getting help if you're wanting to take it up to that next level. Mm-hmm. And do you think too, on this point, I forgot to ask this earlier. So when you're talking about like the white background and stuff, it seems like it's better to have like a super crisp, clean background instead of like trying to have a bunch of stuff in the background or like patterned or anything like that. Is that true? Especially now? Um, it just depends. I know for Amazon, they have really strict rules for their photography. Like it has to be a hundred percent pure white in the background, at least for a certain amount of your photos. Like you could have styled photos for some of them, uh, but they have to have a certain amount of white background photos. But, you know, I think it's great to see styled products, especially with clothing. Like you want to see it on a model walking, Mm -hmm. you know, in real life to see what it looks like. Um, Or food, especially food looks really great, you know, styled in the restaurant. Um, You know, you don't, we don't necessarily want to see pancakes on a white background. Like that would be weird. (laughs) (laughs) But for like, you know, if you've got candles or baskets or something like that, um, just making it super clear what you're getting when you're buying something online is one reason you do the white background, you know, like exactly what am I buying? What is this product? Uh, you know, showing the ingredients on the back or, you know, those important things that people want to see mm-hmm. just making it super clear. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, very cool. Uh, so what advice would you give to people when it comes to their overall digi- digital branding and marketing strategy? So I would say just starting with the strategy, right? Oftentimes <laughs> they're just, right? like they're ju- just jumping in like, oh, let's do a photo shoot. Let's uh, mm-hmm. start posting on social mm-hmm. media. Um, if you can start with a strategy and get someone to help, you know, an expert to help you plan that out, you're just going to have, you're just going to go faster. You're not going to be floundering and just trying stuff out to try it out. Um, and same with even just a photo shoot, like, you know, I'm not the type of photographer that's just going to show up and take pictures for you. We start with this major planning meeting and plan out every detail. And, um, you know, what are you going to wear? Do we need models? What location are we going to use? Um, do we need props, you know, so that you can be totally prepared, know what clothes you're going to wear, should your hair be done a certain way. Um, and that goes the same for any marketing or branding you're going to create, have a strategy behind it. (laughs) So it's, it's for a purpose and a reason uh, to communicate a certain message or get a certain action from your clients. Um, Yeah, that's, that's my number one tip. (laughs) No, that makes sense. Cause I mean, that's essentially, we both help people with that. Right. um, Some way, shape or form. And Mm -hmm. so um, that's, I, I feel like people feel so much better too. When someone is just like, here's your plan. Like, here's what you, here's what you're doing. These are the steps that you're taking This is the order that things are happening in. And they are like, Oh, okay. Cause otherwise they just like Google stuff. Like, what do I need to run a business and right. final they'll get, they're going to find branding. They're going to find marketing. They're going to find, you know, consult, whatever, like all this other yeah. stuff. So, um, I feel like reaching out to someone like us, that's it, that can help you mm-hmm. is always beneficial yeah. then, like, this is what you're starting. Even if, like you said, it's like a few hundred bucks or whatever to start, like, here's mm-hmm. your plan you have that sorted and now you can figure out how much all the other stuff is going to cost and when right. like, yeah, you have a better plan. Yeah. Well, it's going to eliminate a lot of confusion because there's 500 ways you can market your business. Right. And so yeah. you get like the shiny object syndrome, like, Oh, well I tried this thing once and it didn't work. So now I'm going to try this yeah. other thing and then try this other thing. <laughs> so uh, it could be confusing and waste a lot of time and money. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I get that problem sometimes on social media for myself. I'm like, I posted this thing and like, no one commented. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it didn't it work. Time. Yeah. Like it's the job. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I totally get that. Yeah. Cause it's very easy. You're like, well, this didn't work. So now I have to do something else. And then you're just yeah. like and around and around, um, chase your tail. So yeah, I like that. Have strategy. It's a good plan. <laughs> Number one advice. Um, so when someone is considering working with a branding photographer or photographer in general, what do they need to know? How do they need, or how do they know they're working with someone who knows what they're doing and isn't just ripping them off? Yeah, this is such a great question. So I would say, you know, how to find a good branding photographer. First mm-hmm. of all, look for a business that you admire that has great photos 
in their marketing and ask them, you know, who did you use? <laughs> and then go to their website. Uh, if they don't have a website, that's a red flag. <laughs> uh, yep. You know, once you get to their website, if they're showing weddings and babies and that kind of stuff, that's also a red flag. I would say, you know, if you want someone who's really going to cater to you and your needs as a business owner, find someone who only does that or, you know, specializes in branding photography or commercial photography. And then look at their portfolio and look for consistency. You know, are all the photos they're showing uh, look professional and like you would want them in your marketing mm -hmm. and then reach out to them, you know, contact them. If they're uh, a professional, they're going to be willing to get on the phone with you or meet with you and have a conversation and they might be a good fit or they might not be a good fit. And I would say, um, you know, let them know either way. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little baffled to have a conversation with someone and they're like, oh, we'll let you know. And then I never hear back from them. All um, the that's kind of weird. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to take it personally. If you decided to go in a different direction, just let me know. So, but for the most part, most people who get on the phone with me uh, by that time, you know, they've already kind of decided, hey, we want to hire you and just want to mm -hmm. find out the details and, and stuff like that. So um, I would say also look for, you know, questions to ask would be, um, you know, what are the licensing terms that's going to differentiate a retail photographer from a commercial photographer, because you're going to be buying a commercial usage license. So, okay. you know, if they're not explaining that to you or haven't brought it up, they're probably not really familiar with the commercial side of photography. Um, mm -hmm. And I offer a royalty free license usually, which gives you permission to basically use the photos any way you want in your business. Uh, I just have a few stipulations like um, I still have the copyright so I can use them on my portfolio. I oh, don't yeah. want you to do anything like nefarious with the photos. Like you're not putting them on a porn site <laughs> or something weird like that, you know? Yep. Um, and uh, so, but otherwise, you know, you can use them any way you want. Um, a more traditional commercial photographer might give you like a um, restricted usage. Like you can only use them on social media or you can only use them for two years or something like that. That So that, you know, you're just negotiating a licensing term for the photos. Um, and then also if they're not offering that planning meeting I was telling you about, that's also a red flag because, you know, unless you have an art director and you've been planning photo shoots for years, how are you supposed to know what to prepare for or what to do? Um, so that's something to ask for as well. Okay. No, it makes sense. I feel like any business that doesn't offer some sort of consultation is a red flag. Yeah, it, for sure. You can't, yeah. I mean, it's for us like service-based type people where we don't necessarily have like a, a, a store that you can go into and like scope out the product before you mm -hmm. buy it. It's the same kind of concept. Like someone has to be able to talk to me um, and ask me questions and like that also so that I know that they're going to be a good client for me too. Cause sometimes we're not a good fit or right. sometimes they're for something different or things that I don't really want to do. And then I can mm -hmm. be like, Oh, Tanya, like I can help you with the plan, but you're going right. to need to talk to her about yeah. Yeah. branding specifically. Right. So, yeah. Um, That's a mistake I see some photographers making though, especially photographers who maybe are used to working on bigger shoots because in like a traditional commercial photography setting, there would just be a photographer who's going to show up and shoot. And there's someone like a producer who has made all the arrangements, an art director who's going to tell you exactly what they want you to shoot once you get there. So in a traditional, you know, commercial photographer role, you would just show up and be the photographer, but as a branding photographer for smaller businesses, I'm filling all of those roles. Uh, you know, I'm the producer, the art director, the, uh, you know, sometimes I even find models for you, <laughs> which, yeah. you know, traditionally a modeling agency would do that part. So, but for a small business, you know, to make it affordable and because we're just usually working on such a small scale, mm -hmm. I do all of that stuff for you. Okay. So, that makes sense. Um, so as an entrepreneur and business owner yourself, what advice would you give fellow business owners when it comes to running their businesses? Oh man, let's see. Um, man, there's so many things I wish I would have known when I started my business so many years ago. <laughs> but you know, we, like, knew, yeah. yeah, like I knew how to be an artist. I knew how to do that part. But yep. I didn't know, you know, about taxes or like, um, outsourcing or, um, you know, even charging, like how... I would charge like by the hour what I was getting paid in my job, but I didn't know, you know, like in order to make that amount of money, I have to charge like three times 
more because I have expenses and taxes and all that stuff. So, you know, learning how to price for profit um, Mm -hmm. is important. Uh, I would say, like, get a business coach. (laughs) That's probably the number one thing that has helped me is getting someone to help me and teach me those things and walk me through all the mindset issues that come up as a business owner. So, um, you know, make the investment in getting some help. And there's actually a lot of free resources here in Spokane, if you're starting your business, Mm -hmm. uh, like SCORE and Startup Spokane, uh, the public library. Um, Some of the universities have consultants that can help you with your business plan and that kind of stuff. And I didn't know about any of those until I'd already kind of invested a lot of money in paying someone to help me. (laughs) So I wish I would have known about some of those resources when I was starting out with no money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's the uh, like the SBDC, which is the Small Business Development Center has, um, what's it called? Yeah, uh, offices in uh, tons of cities. Um, I think it's in pretty much Mm -hmm. any large-ish kind of like Coeur d'Alene has one, um, Spokane has one or two, I think. Right. But yeah, like you said, like the people that are there to advise you and guide you and show you what all the free resources are and be like, mm-hmm. hey, you do this thing, you need to do this, um, but here's where you go to figure it out. So yeah, those things right. are great. Um, so tell us how we can best support you. Uh, what are you working on besides your surprise uh, rebrand announcement? <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Read the word for you about anything. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'm announcing that here. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm just kind of making that transition away from just offering photography. I mean, I've been doing this all along for clients. I just haven't really been putting it out there. So, mm-hmm. um, and this will allow me to work with people outside of Spokane too, which is exciting. Uh, you know, people who need help with their branding. Um, I'm toying with the idea of creating a kind of a personal branding intensive retreat where we would meet at an Airbnb or something. So if you're coming from out of town or even in town where we just get it all done, like your logo, website, photos, videos, just get it all done in like two or three days and launch it. So you don't have to think about it for six months or however long (laughs) it typically takes. Um, And I just, I have a Facebook group called Rock Your Luxury Brand. Uh, If anyone wants to come join us there, um, you know, I'm trying to grow that group and it's just a place for free resources for people who are wanting to learn about how to create a brand that's more high end. Um, That's a super fun place to come connect with me. And then workstorycreative.com is my website that I haven't designed yet. (laughs) Uh, Right now it goes to my photography page. So, uh, but you know, eventually I'll have my new shiny website up there for Workstory Creative. And I'd love to hear from people about you know, what their struggles have been with building their brand or ideas for how to take it to the next level. Very cool. Yeah. And I'm actually in your Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I'm loving that group. We're having so much fun in there. <laughs> it's good. You get a lot of interaction and activity. So yeah. And it, I mean, I have a hard time with mine. Like that's something that I really need to focus energy on. Um, cause I have a free Facebook group too, but it, mm-hmm. it's just, it's one of those things I'm like, okay, I have to just do this. Um, because it does make a difference. <laughs> Um, yeah, consistent. yeah, right. So, so I actually have, like I talked about with the social media before, I have a formula for how to do it. So it's it's replicable mm-hmm. every month, um, but it's also super fun. I love being in that group. So yeah, very cool. Maybe I will finally be inspired to actually do mine. Um, yeah, <laughs> hanging out, waiting for me to like help them with stuff. I'm just like, right. <laughs> over here being stressed out. Um, Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Did you have any other last thoughts before we go? Um, I think that's it. This has been such a great conversation. Thanks for having me on. Uh, oh, I did want to ask you, like, for what you do, like, how would that fit in for one of my clients? Like, um, the strategy part, is it more like marketing focused, the um, consulting that you're doing? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. So I do pretty much everything from, um, God, uh, HR income and expense management. So the, the pillars okay. that, have that are kind of like that delineate each of the pieces that I can help people with is, um, <laughs> let's hope I can remember them all. <laughs> off the cuff, right. That's the nerve wracking part. Um, so business startup basics. So like the stuff they need to like, you know, what's an LLC, how do you get it? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, how do you get your EIN, all those kinds of things. And then, um, income and expense management, 
uh, branding and marketing. So there's a little mm -hmm. bit of touch on that piece of it. And then mm -hmm. um, leadership and culture and then growth and scalability is kind of the last piece of it. So like that's kind of putting it all together because I'm more of a like kind of a utility player when it comes to running a business. So I have a really strong operations background okay. uh, with also some sales in there too. But that's really where that's what my strength is, which means that I have a lot of general knowledge about a mm -hmm. lot of things when it comes to running a business. So I would probably be compared to like an HR generalist at a larger company or an operations uh, manager of some kind. Like that's generally okay. where, where my stuff cool. is. So I touch on a lot of those things like I've done, you know, back office, admin, hiring, HR, um, budgeting. I've been managing a, a multi-million dollar P&L since I was 19 in some way, shape or form. So cool. um, yeah, so I feel like where like you and I would partner on some of those things is like you're specifically helping and like that your strategy is as it regards to like branding, marketing, that yep. kind of stuff. And then I would come in on some of more of the operational functionality, process improvement, those kinds of pieces. So I love that. Yeah. I like knowing, like I said, where I can refer those pieces out. Yeah. It sounds like you're kind of a left brain to my right brain, like parts <laughs> of the <laughs> business. Yeah. Yeah, like there's still, there's still pieces of me that are definitely like on the creative side of things, but I'm very strong in structure, organization, processes, mm -hmm. um, and helping people. Like I have the, that's like my superpower is like, if you're, you tell me like all the things, like you have all these things you want to accomplish and there's 26 million things because you're a creative entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that in my, my brain just like knows how to like chunk it all together and like create structure. And that's just, cool. that's what I see what my superpower is creating structure out of chaos. So, um, yeah, I love working with dreamers and people who have these crazy ideas and they're like, I don't need like my real big dream. And I'm like, yeah, like, what do you really want to do? Cause you can do yeah. it it's just like figuring out how to get there. So that's cool. Uh, yeah. Yep. I love it. My, my, brain, <laughs> my brain works. I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah, I like it. So <laughs> Um, yeah, but very cool. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I always love talking to people about, I love making connections and talking about other people's business. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll definitely have to stay in touch and, um, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>